Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Foundation plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today we are going to talk a little bit about the new interior footings module. And I'm going to show you here is the uh, new little toolbar that has those four items or tools. Um, let's put that right back. And so basically, previously with the foundation, um, you could create, you know, uh, basically a, a interior footing, just one either in the X or the Y direction. And so now with this new interior footing module we can create as many interior footings as we like. So what I've gone ahead uh, uh, pre before the video here is gone ahead and set up a grid using the grid tool which I might add is a really handy little uh, tool that everybody should have. It's uh, I have it right here. It's actually provided by SketchUp. Um, so anyways, using the grid tool, then I just quickly laid out this uh, little outline with some lines to indicate where I want to put uh, the <coughs> interior footings. And so, um, and I'm going to go ahead and just hide this layer with the dimensions because I don't need this now with the grid. I'm just going to hide that. And now I'm going to work just with this. So first of all, let's go ahead and we're going to do a polygon slab on grade um, uh, foundation and and to note also that this these features right now only work for slab on grade foundations it does does not work for stem walls it does not work for slabs uh, at some point I will probably be putting together a whole different set of icons and tools for the stem wall and uh, make it so that these will work as well for the uh, regular slab so let's go ahead we're going to do a polygon slab on grade <coughs> And we'll just go ahead and draw our points by picking the vertices of this vertices, sorry, of this particular polygon. Now you're going to note with this new uh, first menu, all of the interior footing uh, parameters have gone away, and that's because we've eliminated the old uh, interior footing uh, module and replaced it with a new one. So now those uh, parameters are part of this module. And uh, we're going to turn the slab reinforcement off just so we can make things go a little quicker right now for the video. And <coughs> hit OK. Anchor bolts are fine. Just kind of leave everything as default. OK, so there's our slab. Uh, initial slab here with the no footings, of course. <coughs> um, one thing to note is right here in the Layers tab, you're going to see what's called the Foundation Hidden Layer. And this layer is used um, by the plugin and you can manually turn it on and off there's no harm in doing that but basically it provi provides labels and kind of an outline of where the footings are on top of the foundation so that you can use that to select the particular interior footing that you want to work with and, and I'll demonstrate that here shortly so let's go ahead and get right into it here with this um, draw the interior footing so I'm going to just go ahead and select this and the first thing you'll notice, of course, is now you have an HTML menu pop up. I think we'll just leave everything as um, as it is. And I'm going to demonstrate a few of these other features uh, as we go along here. But first, just leave everything default, and let's just go ahead and draw these um, footings. Okay, so we can go ahead here, and just click there. Okay, and now you have a footing in there. I'll just continue on here. Okay, and we'll place another one right like that. Okay, and then we'll just place another one right there. Okay. Okay, so the first thing you notice, and then we'll just hit the space bar and it jumps us out of all this. <coughs> the first thing you'll notice, of course, is we've got some problems. Okay, so the footings are extending, uh, the sloping part of the footing is extending beyond the foundation perimeter. And in this case, we're not getting. Um, you know a, a nice corner treatment or it's not um, it's not mitering correctly I guess I is the right word but um, so so no no worries we can we can deal with that so what we would want to do to deal with this is we want to turn the, sl the uh, slope start so the start of the footings here and you can tell where the start of a footing is simply by when you hit edit um, you're gonna automatically turn on this uh, hidden wireframe layer but the start of the footing is always, and there's always a start and an end point. Okay, so the start is always on this side, and then the end is always on this side. So you, you can go by the label. The label basically to the uh, left of the label, looking at it like you're going to read it, 
this will be the start of this footing this will be the end of this footing start of this footing end of this footing okay so we're gonna edit this here first one and we're going to select it and then you're you know you get all your basic options and we're gonna turn the slope uh, sloping of the footing off on the start so we're gonna hit no on that okay so we hit no and then let's hit update okay so now you can see um, <coughs> with it, it's not uh, it's not extending past um, where it passed the perimeter okay so let's go ahead and select this footing now and notice you don't have to um, jump out of this and then go back into the edit menu you can just click on another interior footing it's going to load up the parameters for that so in this one of course we're going to want to turn off the sloping start for t uh, both both end start and end and hit update on that okay so now we've got that right okay so now let's figure out what we want to do here so what we want to do here if you look at this you actually want to extend this end of this footing right to this uh, another six inches to meet this so that's what we're gonna do actually we're gonna click this and we have the option here now at the end to extend the actual concrete okay so we're gonna hit um, put six inches in there hit update and you see that that has updated. Now we're going to also do that to this one. Now it's not required because, as you can tell, we've already got that. But just for consistency's sake, we're going to we're going to we've already selected the footing too, and so we will extend um, uh, this back by six. And basically, when I say extend, it goes that direction or this direction. So it'll extend. You can also put negative numbers in here, so it'll extend uh, the other direction as well. So we're going to extend the start back six inches. Okay. So now you can see we've got everything lining up there and actually we'll extend the um, the end here as well okay and then let's select this footing here and let's extend its start by six inches okay and so you can see everything's parametric I mean we're editing these things and, and if we wanted to you know we could extend this one out to there if we want um, actually let's go ahead and do that <coughs> just to try it okay so now if we take a look at our footings everything is doing what we want it to do now let's say that this footing extends beyond there okay well you got one of two options you can extend just the concrete now the con extending it does not extend the rebar the rebar is always staying put but it is ex put an extension on the concrete um, but if you really need to change you know let's say this footing extends way out here then we'll need to actually edit the uh, or what I call move um, the outline of the of the footing itself, which we can do. So let's go ahead and um, just go ahead and close out of that. <coughs> um, and I'm just going to hide this other uh, thing. So so you can see that you know normally speaking, when this hidden layer is turned off, there's you, nothing is shown. If you turn the hidden layer on for the foundation, and this is kind of like a system layer, um, so don't delete it. Um, but basically it will show you where your footings are from the top of the foundation okay and I'm going to actually turn uh, this thing on transparent now so we can take a look at what's going on inside okay so that's what's happening inside right here's our rebar uh, you can see our rebar there everything I'm gonna go ahead and change the rebar on like let's say footing three for whatever reason it's got a real heavy beam or heavy wall or something there um, let's go ahead and do that. So we select footing three, and rather than just one bar on the bottom, uh, you could do two bars on the bottom, three bars on the bottom. I'm going to do four bars, which puts two on the top, two on the bottom. Okay. Okay. So now you can see that the uh, the rebar has been adjusted accordingly, and there's always like a three-inch clearance from top and bottom. I don't know if it's kind of hard to visualize all that. There's a lot going on there, but um. So there, you've got more bars in there now. <coughs> um, so that's basically it for that. It's not too much. Um, oh, let's go ahead and um, use the delete tool. So let's say we want to get rid of footing one and two, or whatever, maybe just footing one. Okay, so now footing one is gone. Let's get rid of footing two. Okay, so now we're left with footing three. Okay, and that's it, footing three and four. Um, that's, so that covers deletion. Deletion's easy. You just 
click it, it shows the outlines, you select it, and it's gone, and then it refreshes. Let's um, now let's go ahead and move. We're gonna we're gonna use this move function. This one's a little more uh, a little more involved, a little more complicated, I would say. Um, and you know, honestly, for me, it seems like it's easier just to delete a footing and then recreate it. But sometimes you might have a footing that uh, you know you've gone ahead and set a lot of parameters on you, and you don't want to, have to recreate it. So maybe it is easier for you just to 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 do what I call the move function. But first, let's uh, let's do a couple more uh, things to this here footing. First of all, I want to talk about the vertical drop. So let's say that this footing is rather deep. Um, let's say a 24-inch footing. Okay. Now, if I was to update that to 24-inch footing, you can see that, I mean, this is ridiculous, right? I mean, that's that, that footing is just way too wide with that slope like that. So typically on a, on a deep footing like that, um, you know, you're not going to slope slope it the whole way. So what you want to do is you want to use this vertical drop option. So I'm going to set this vertical drop, um, let's say, let's just say 12 inches for now to test it. Okay, and so now what you've got going on is you basically have it where it, it actually will vertic you know, it won't slope it all the way, it'll provide a vertical section before it starts to slope, right? And that vertical section is the, the vertical drop, so that's 12 inches from here to here. Okay, and you can adjust that, you know, maybe you want a little more or less so that you have less slope. You can, you can play with that number a little bit and you can get it, just tune it in, uh, to exactly where you want it. Um, okay, so we've got that. Uh, let's go ahead and now and actually um, let's go hit this move function. So this is this one kind of gets interesting. So when I hit that, and I'm going to select this footing, and I'm going to I'm going to actually want to extend this footing. Let's say another couple feet out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Okay, so what happens is it hides all of the other geometry, turns off a bunch of layers. It's not deleting; it's just turning off some layers. Um, and it's showing you, okay, we're editing footing three. And so what you need to do is this line is actually within a group. Okay, so you can see, notice how it's colored green. That's kind of like my temp layer or whatever. Um, but you can't, you don't want to move this group around. You want to actually click into this group. Okay, so now, now we're actually editing this line. Okay, so I'm going to go here, click the move, select this endpoint and just pull it out say to 24 inches okay okay so now I've extended that line out okay now I haven't moved the group I've jumped into the group I've edit, I can do whatever I want I can even delete this line and replace it with another line but the bottom line is you need to have just one line with two endpoints you can't have multiple lines in there just one line because that defines the single path of the footing okay you don't have to jump back out I mean you can you just have to hit this update button now. Okay, and so now you can see that the footing has been. The only thing that's happened is you know it's basically taken that new path and recreated the footing, and now it extends another two feet this direction. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much all that does. Um, so like I said, you can completely redefine the path for any of these interior footings. I'm going to go ahead and change the transparency back just so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening. Now, um, just just for interest's sake, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to uh, turn the sub base on, so I'm going to edit this footing. So I just go edit foundation, and I go down here. I'm going to turn the sub base option on, and four feet gravel that or four inches gravel. That's fine. Just hit update. Okay, and it's doing its thing. There we go. So now you can see we've got a sub base added to the um, to the foundation. And actually, we'll turn the transparency back on so you can actually see how that looks. So as you can see, the footings, you know, they work well with the sub base and actually with the sub slab insulation. I'm not going to do that one right now, but um, but there it is. So. Yeah, the interior footing module is uh, seems to work reasonably well with uh, sub base uh, material as well as slab insulation and um, and rebar. 
so bottom line is is you need to be able to edit each one of these and the edit function is where the power is uh, in my opinion you know it allows you to just basically do whatever you like with any one of these options right now the anchorable option is not enabled I will be adding a, an a option to run anchor bolts along uh, you know the center line of these footings possibly with, even with an offset um, but uh, that that feature has not been enabled yet. So if you go to turn that on, it's just going to be it's going to be turned off. Um, it allows you to you know change the footing bar diameter for each footing separately, as well as the quantity of bars. If you select six bars, it's going to put three at the top, three at the bottom, four bars will be two at the top, two at the bottom, and then every one of these other ones will just put the bars at the bottom. Um, I think we've explained the sloping and the extending, so that really encompasses these four variables here. Reinforcement, of course, turns the bars off. Uh, the angle of the footing, so the sloping of the angle, can be uh, controlled here with this with this angle uh, parameter. And then, of course, we have the footing width and depth, and then the vertical drop option, as I've demonstrated. So please, uh, you know, give this a whirl. It's a it's a new feature, so again, um, you know, I'm always ready to put some fires out if if some are found. But uh, I really appreciate you guys' support and patience with me on this. I know it's been a long time coming. And hopefully we can add a few more features into this Foundation plugin and, and bring it up to par with the other plugins. So thank you very much.